Hey there, and welcome to Oh Shit, I'm the Boss Now, the podcast that's all about helping you navigate the sometimes terrifying and humbling journey of becoming the boss your business needs you to be. I'm your host, Jackie Koch, and I've been in the trenches building, recruiting, and HR programs for over 15 years. From hiring to firing and everything in between, I've seen it all. Technically, I have an MBA, but I can say with total confidence that I learned more about scaling teams working in high growth startups for the last seven years. This podcast is not going to bring you corporate red tape or high level theory. It's more like a fireside chat with your friend, you know, the one who always tells you the real hard, honest truth that's sometimes annoying. That's going to be me from time to time. We'll dive into the real talk about what it means to lead, to manage, and to build a team when all of a sudden you look around the room and you're like, oh shit, I'm the one in charge. No BS, just actionable advice and stories from people just like you. So whether you're a seasoned entrepreneur, a newbie boss, or somewhere in the middle, oh shit, I'm the boss now is your go-to source for insights, inspiration, and the occasional, well, hopefully more than occasional aha moment that'll make your journey smoother and more successful. So grab your coffee, your notepad, or just sit back and enjoy the ride because together we're going to tackle the challenges, celebrate the victories, and learn from the mishaps we all make. It's time to step into your role of boss with confidence, grace, and for the love of God, a little bit of humor. Hey, welcome back to the show. I'm Jackie, your host, and today is the beginning of 2024. Welcome. We made it, I think. Are we tired? I'm sure I'll be tired of recording this early, but it is after Thanksgiving at the time I'm recording this, and I'm tired. So I can't even imagine how I'm going to feel in a month. The holidays just end up crushing us a little bit. There's the obvious, right? There's Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, all those things. But here at our fam, it goes Thanksgiving, Chris's birthday, Lori's birthday. Literally, it's Thanksgiving. Chris's birthday is the 24th. Lori's is the 3rd. I always, nope, 6th or 3rd. Wow. Sorry, Lori. I love you. The reason I get them mixed up is one of my best friends growing up, Sarah, her birthday is either the third or the sixth. I think Lori's is the third. I'm going to have to look that up. Now I feel like a jerk. Anyways, my birthday is the 16th. Then we have Christmas. Then we have my mom's birthday is the 27th. She turned 70 this year. And then New Year's. It's just a lot of stuff back to back. But we've made it. We are in the new year. And Wanted to start the new year off reminding you that you really want to get the HR stuff right in 2024. And I am reminded of this because I've had now this week alone a lot of new conversations with small business owners that haven't been thinking about this stuff. And I had one business owner say to me on a call, we finally have enough to lose that we want to get this right. And it like stuck me like a dagger because I was like, that is so true. And I'm so grateful that she's thinking about this that early because they're still young. They still have time to get this stuff right. And even if you're not young and you haven't been paying attention to this stuff, you can get it right. But they're doing it early because they know that the bigger they get, the more employees they get, the more things get bigger the more opportunity there is for big issues and big mistakes to happen. And so when we were on the call with her, she was just like chatting through some of the stuff that she didn't know. She's like, I know there's stuff I don't know. And we were able to answer her question super, super easily because we've been doing it for so long, not because we're like smarter. It's just we've seen it all. And then I had a couple more calls recently with a couple people who have fired employees and they are threatening to sue for various things. And As I'm going through how to handle it, there's been issues with some of the offer letters and the contracts and things that they've had because they were just busy doing the thing. They didn't think those little things mattered until you piss off an employee or something doesn't go right. Then those things pop up and they rear their ugly heads and you can be in a world of trouble. So this is just my reminder to you that this stuff does matter and it doesn't have to be hard. It can be super simple. And it doesn't feel important until you realize it's important. And 
I'm just going to continue to hammer that home because once you realize it's important, I want you to have your ass covered. I want you to be set up to be able to prove that you did the things that you claim you did. I want it to work for you. I recorded a podcast episode with a friend and we are talking about the HR stuff. And he always makes a joke that it's like, oh, I got to be careful. HR is here. People say that to me all the damn time. And I'm like, I probably swear more than you. I don't understand why we can't have fun if we're in HR. But I do feel like you've had two experiences with HR, right? And both of them, I think, put us in the Toby from the office category. And so I think you're in two camps. One, you've worked with HR teams that are like the no fun police, like looking to get people in trouble, forcing you to do a bunch of paperwork. They're the no fun police. Or you've had zero experience with an HR team at all. So all you know is the office or what other people say about HR teams. And in my experience, most people think that until they actually work with someone like me who actually understands how business works. And the best HR people are those that one, care about transparency, like just treating people with respect and being honest with them and giving people the benefit of the doubt and giving them a chance. That's truly what I think makes somebody a good leader too, right? What I also find is somebody who's good at business. Some of the not so great folks that I've worked with don't understand business. So they throw out these rules and these policies because they're like erring so far on covering your butt that you do have to like jump through red tape to do basic things that is unnecessary, So it's like there is a sweet spot of putting things into place, documenting and doing things right, while also allowing you to run the business and understanding that like there's some fluidity in it. I like to think the best HR people are actually good at business. And I think Molly and I are that way. And the other thing that I find so interesting about this that I wanted to share today is, oh, where do I want to start with this? So I'll often hear, I don't know if you hear this as well, I'll often hear that finance and HR are the boring things. Nobody wants to focus on those things. And I do see this. Like I'll go to business events, entrepreneurship events. Everybody wants to talk about the marketing, the social media, like all of the sexy stuff. And they're all interested in that, right? That's why you signed up to go to these events. But then what I often find is that the questions that people actually ask are related to finance or team stuff, right? And I'd also be willing to bet that for most people who have employees, marketing and sales isn't really the stuff that keeps you up at night. I bet for most of you, the stuff that keeps you up at night is the HR and the finance stuff, right? It's at least 100% with the founders and CEOs that I've worked with, the stuff that keeps them up at night is finances. Do you have enough money? How do you raise enough money? How do you keep the money? How do you generate more money? So one could argue that generate more money is marketing and sales, but you get my drift. Like finance and financial control keeps people up at night. And then the other thing is the HR and the people side. And not even HR, it's just the people side. Is this person the right fit for the job? I'm wondering if they are. I don't think they are. Ugh, I have to have this uncomfortable conversation with this person tomorrow. Ugh, this person did that oh, why are they not focused on the right things? I have to fire this person or I have to lay off people. And like, how do I do this? That's been my experience as of late. Like those are the things that keep people up at night, not the sexy stuff. So it's like, why are you avoiding all of this stuff? If it's the stuff that's keeping you up at night, don't you want to fix it? Don't you want to get it right? Don't you want to hope that you're doing it right? I just strongly urge you not to keep avoiding it or putting it on the back burner because it's going to be there till you feel like you have peace of mind or you have the right stuff in place to know that at least you're being intentional about it and you're not just praying that something doesn't get you in trouble. And so all of the stuff that I just shared matters. There's a lot of reason why it matters, but ultimately if you're running a business, it comes down to money. And I think there's two versions of this, right? There's the cost of doing it incorrectly as well as the critical revenue and profitability benefits of doing it right. So there's a cost to doing it wrong, and there's definitely a impact to the bottom line of doing it right. And so I wanted to share some of these stats with you today. So some stats about compliance issues. So this was wild to me. 
small businesses pay around $12,000 a year in compliance penalties on average per employee. $12,000 per employee per year. Now, this is an average, right? And the majority of businesses in the U.S. are small businesses. So you might be a lucky one who hasn't had to have this, but just know that there's a lot of them out there that are paying these crazy numbers every single year per employee. The U.S. Department of Labor in 2019 collected $322 million in back wages due to Fair Labor Standard Act violations. So that is classifying somebody as a salaried employee and not eligible for overtime who should actually be eligible for overtime. A violation could also be you're not giving the appropriate meals and rest breaks. You're not tracking hours correctly. You're not paying overtime correctly. Real quick, do you ever find yourself listening along to this and being like, well, shit, I wonder if I'm doing everything right from a legal and compliance perspective. Now, I've said this a lot, but I'm not an attorney, so nothing I share is legal advice. But over the last 15 years, I've worked with a lot of employment attorneys on a lot of different things related to people in HR. So I've learned a thing or two about helping a business stay compliant with the people stuff and implement some of the best practices so you can cover your ass which is why I'm so excited about a free compliance and best practices checklist we've created over at my company, People Principles. It literally walks you step-by-step how to conduct an HR audit similar to what we do when we onboard new clients. So go grab your free copy over at peopleprinciples.co and you'll see it right there on the homepage. Now back to the show. There's a lot of things that go into the Fair Labor Standards Act, but those are some of the biggest things. And I think actually classifying somebody as a contractor versus employee might be looped into that. But regardless, that's also a violation. The EEOC, so the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, so that's the commission that really oversees a lot of discrimination and things like that resolved over 70,000 charges in 2019, secured $346.6 million for victims of discrimination. Like, you do not want to be somebody who discriminates against people in your business. Often, issues of discrimination are unintentional. It is the outcome of things that you didn't realize were happening in the business, but still happened. So it doesn't have to be with bad intentions for it to happen. And I think what can happen often if you are a good person and you feel like you are doing the right things, you think that you are treating everybody fairly and that things in your business are fair when oftentimes they might not be, not because you are intentionally a shitty person. Now, there are definitely people out there that are, but I'm just highlighting that some of it is just an unknowing. You don't know what you don't know, and you don't know the impact that certain things are having on your business. And so that's why doing this stuff right matters. A couple more for you. The median amount of an EEOC claim. So an EEOC claim would be a discrimination claim, essentially. The median amount of an EEOC claim or settlement is about $40,000. And it could cost you over $125,000 to defend the lawsuit. And then the last one, the failure to comply with record keeping requirements can cost up to a little over $1,000 per employee. So that is like not submitting paperwork, not providing the right tax info, like all of those things. Then there's the cost of having a bad culture. So the things I just shared are impacts of basic compliance things, right? So like those are like non-negotiables that you should just have. And then there is the impacts of not having a good culture. And so when I look at this, I think of like there's the basics for compliance that you have to follow. Then There's best practices for creating a great place to work, right? So if you're listening to the show, you probably want to have a good place to work. I can't imagine you would listen to a podcast about this stuff if you didn't want to be a good place to work. Best practices that we talk about on this show help you create a great culture and and a great workplace. And so 
when you don't have a great workplace, people leave, right? So turnover, the average cost of onboarding a new employee is $4,000. We've talked about that. So like the cost of people leaving your company because it's not a good place to be, it costs money. Not investing in these things costs money and has a real impact. And then not to mention just your brain power and energy of retraining people. When you have high turnover, it is exhausting retraining people over and over and over again, right? So it's like all of those things matter. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the flip side. There are significant studies that show that having some of these best practices in in place can lead to better productivity and overall company and individual performance increases. So one example of a best practice is having regular development and or just even feedback conversations, right? Giving real-time feedback, having one-on-ones with your team, all of that is a feedback loop. And companies that, according to Gallup, companies that implement regular employee feedback have almost a 15% lower turnover rate. That seems pretty simple to start implementing a one-on-one process and giving people real-time feedback. And it makes sense for the business to do that. Performance review processes. And actually, this is more performance management process. So this is like you have a process in which you share with people when there's issues. You share with them how to improve. You do a performance review process with them regularly. Effective ones have a 51% higher revenue compared to those with poorly implemented systems. And that's according to Averting Group. Organizations with a strong new hire onboarding process improve new hire retention by 82% and productivity by over 70%. There's a lot of stuff. Okay, one last thing about regular one-on-one meetings because I think this is crucial. Regular one-on-one meetings between managers and employees can result in three-time increase in engagement and a 20% increase in team performance. So that doesn't mean just by scheduling the one-on-one, you're automatically going to have them. But having a great process for meeting with your teams regularly and doing regular one-on-ones, according to Gallup, can lead to a 20% increase in team performance. You can't afford to do this stuff wrong. You can't afford to ignore it. And it's so much easier to do this when you're small than to try to write a ship when there's 100 employees. So if you have five people, 10 people, 20 people. Getting this stuff right now will be so much easier and save you so much time, energy, and money. So it's like you got to get the HR stuff right. I plead for you. Make 2024 the year that you actually do it, right? Make it the year you do it. I'm going to tell you 2024 is the year that I actually do bookkeeping in my business because it's been three years I'm decent. No, I won't even lie. I'm not great at it. But I could give you all of the reasons. I actually was, if you noticed, I was just about to start rattling off all the reasons I haven't done it, right? Because I'm busy. Because all of these things. 2024 is the year that I actually start fucking doing it. So what if 2024 was the year you actually started thinking about the HR side of your business? And I don't want to be the one that you reach out to because you get a lawsuit because you fired somebody not the right way or the right way, but then you have other stuff going on. You don't have the right things to cover your basis. Like, I'll help you through that. And I hope you call me. I wouldn't love to help you with going through that, but I will because you deserve help along the way. But let's fix it before we get there, I guess is my point. So I'm really excited because we have a new service for small businesses. And it is our HR services for small businesses. And you essentially get a full-time HR person available to you or you don't get a full-time HR person, but you get access to myself and my team of HR executives to support you with these things 24-7. I roll my eyes if you were watching the video because technically it's like we do a business hours, but you get unlimited email and Slack access to us with two-hour response times because let's be real, when you're going through an employee issue, Oftentimes, you don't have four days to wait for somebody to respond, right? So we have a two-hour turnaround time between our business hours, which are Monday through Thursday. I believe it's 9 a.m. Central to 5 p. 
p.m. Central. It might be 8 a.m. Central. I have to, I, I can't remember one of the two, but you get a two hour turnaround time. If you email us or Slack us outside of those hours, it's a, a two day turnaround time, two business days. You also get access to this incredible resource. We've created basically a client portal where you get how to guides, you get templates and toolkits. There's a bunch of stuff in there that you have access to 24-7. So if you do need help with something and we're not available in that moment, you can at least look in there. You can also learn how to do stuff. And then we have office hours every single week that you can sign up for to chat through like an issue or something that you want to roll out with your team. And so we finally created this for small businesses because there's really not a great resource out there for HR support for your small business without hiring a random HR consultant on an hourly basis. And we're so excited that this is finally launched. It's been a dream of ours for a long time. So if you head over to peopleprinciples.co forward slash on demand, you can find out all the details. But for less than $4,000 for the year, you can literally get unlimited access to us. It feels like a no brainer, but that is for you to decide. And I really hope that this year is the year that you get it right and that you do the HR stuff. I'm going to do the bookkeeping so you can do it too. Thanks so much for tuning in and happy new year to you. Let's go out and crush 2024. We hope you're feeling inspired and ready to take things up a notch in your business. And just wanted to remind you that if you want access to the tools, strategies, and guidance you need, our on-demand HR program might be perfect for you. Say goodbye to corporate HR rules because hello, that's not how I roll here if you've listened to a few episodes. And say hello to straightforward, actionable advice designed just for your small business and actually for you individually. Because you get unlimited email and DM access to our team, including me. It's like having your own HR consultant on speed dial. So don't wait. Take your small business to the next level with our on-demand program at peopleprinciples.co forward slash on-demand. We're here to support you every step of the way of building and leading and managing your team. Thanks for being a part of our community and we'll see you in the next episode.